Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've got an interesting project I'm working on today with these modern homes that are becoming more and more prevalent. The architects and designers keep demanding more and more of us as carpenters. So what I have here is the beginning of a, of a modern slat wall design. This is gonna go on the backside of a locker unit um, for some entryway cabinetry we're gonna have in our modern retreat build. So as you see here, I've got a sheet of plywood that I spliced together, made it into a 10 foot long piece of plywood because we've got 10 foot ceilings. This whole thing will be painted black and then we'll apl be applying pre-finished hickory slats to the whole thing. They'll be spaced three quarters of an inch apart. Now the whole idea here was that I wanted to use the Lamello Zeta with the Tenso connectors to be able to take my slats and be able just to snap them into place. So I'm gonna take you through the process of how I did this panel, show you how the Lamello works a little bit, and uh, yeah, just hang along for the ride. It's gonna be an interesting project to see how it actually works and how it comes together. Getting started on this detail, the first challenge that I had was that the ceiling height is 10 feet in this area. That means I needed to join two sheets of plywood together, creating a splice, which can be difficult at times with plywood. I have to do it all the time and I've got a variety of different techniques that I use. This was the first time I've used the Lamello Clam X and I was extremely impressed. As you can see here, I've already got my plywood glued up and joined together into a 10 foot long piece. My splice is right here. I've lightly sanded it. What I used was the Lamello Clamex uh, to join this together. So I've actually got five of these Clamex in here along with four standard number 20 dominoes to join that splice together. For those of you who aren't familiar, familiar with the Lamello, I'm gonna show you and give you a little demonstration on how this works. As you can see here, it kind of looks like a standard biscuit joiner slot, but it's much larger and it's got this kind of oblong cut at the end. The way this works is these pieces actually slide in like so. So you can put these in and remove them. Now for the Clamex style, there are two different pieces. Uh, one is just a standard piece that basically gets latched into. And then here is your, uh, I'll call it cam action piece. You can see we've got a little hex slot in here. And as I turn that, this metal piece turns and that creates a cam action that will pull the other side together. So if I put these two together like so, I'll go ahead and insert my hex wrench in there, you can tighten that down and the two pieces become one. The nice thing about this is that this also makes the joint removable as well. On one side of the workpiece, you will drill two holes for access. It's nice whenever it works out that you can uh, hide these holes on the back side of a workpiece material situation but here i'm just going to slide these in and show you how this works real quick so we've got those two pieces in position there and i'll take my other clips and position these on the other side slide that in like so now we can put these together and you can take your wrench and it's simply a turn of the wrench And this is together and it's got a nice strong connection. As you can see, that works really good. But if I want to take these apart, no big deal. I'll just undo them. Lefty Lucy here. And now the piece pops apart again. So really cool. A lot of different um, ways you can use this uh, for cabinetry installation, millwork, etc. But in this case, I joined these two pieces of plywood together and it creates a really strong connection having five of those over a four foot long piece of plywood connection. 
I should note the reason that you don't see the holes for my Clamax connectors here on the face of the plywood was because I positioned the holes on the underside. That way they'd be hidden and I don't have to worry about filling anything. Now that I have my plywood joined together, it's time to do the layout. So you'll see here, I've got these perpendicular lines running across the board. That will be where my tenso connectors will go. I've got this laid out, so I'm starting at six inches off the top and the bottom, and then I'm putting a connector every 18 inches. So I've got those perpendicular lines, and then here on the end of the board, you'll see I've got these small lines every inch and a half. Uh, these, will, these slats will be inch and a half centers, so I've got those all laid out accordingly. Now you'll see my board here that I've got clamped down. Whenever I marked my center lines, basically I marked my center lines here. Problem is I need to be able to put a straight edge on here and the straight edge needs to be offset 3 8 So I took a fairly straight uh, one by six that I had laying around and just tacked a piece of 3 8 uh, onto the side here. That way I can reference it to my mark and then whenever I use the Zeta, I can just plunge it on my lines and uh, don't have to do too much mental work or stuff like that in my head. One of the first things I did when I purchased the Zeta was I put a Festool plug it connector on the end. That way I can use it with my dust hose and Festool connector, which I typically uh, am always using here on the workbench. As you can see here, I've got my overhead dust arm and it works perfect for you know working in the shop on the workbench. So that was an upgrade to the Zeta that I'm really glad I made. Just makes it a lot more handy to use rather than working with a really long cord on it. I've got my straight edge clamped down. I've got my lines marked where I'm going to be plunging. And uh, most of you are probably pretty familiar with using the Zeta in this position where you're using the fence and plunging it plunging it onto a workpiece like so. With this operation, we're gonna be putting the fence back up to square and we'll be plunging it straight down like this. Okay, there's round one. That went well. Hopefully all the rest will go like this. I think I've got about 30 of these lines to do. About 180 total mortises. Well, this is what you don't want to have happen. I've got this hose that goes all the way up over here down to a Festool Midivac. And I noticed I was getting some sawdust kind of flurrying around the machine. So I immediately stopped because I knew that this was probably what was going on. So hopefully I didn't plug up my hose too bad. Okay, sawdust clog is cleaned out. We're back in business. I was kind of getting tired of squatting down and I realized I could just sit on my stool and do this. At least part of it. Okay guys, so just wrapped up 186 mortises on this panel here. Now I wanted to just give you a little bit of a demonstration I don't actually have the slats that are gonna go on top of this uh, yet. Our cabinet guy is going to make those and pre-finish those, 
So then I'll probably get a hold of those on the job site and mortise those there, which is really depressing to think about considering what it took to just do 186 of these. It's definitely very repetitious and tedious doing this kind of detail. But just to show you, uh, I just took a scrap out of the trash bin, and this is about the size of what we're gonna be installing on this as the finished product, about an inch deep, maybe even an inch and a quarter. I went ahead and put a couple Clamex connectors on here, and you can see that whenever you drop this in place, like so, I'll take my uh, wrench here and uh, go ahead and try to tighten these up. There we go. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be using the Clamex connectors uh, whenever I do this. We're gonna be using the Tenso connectors, which I'll show you in just a second. I didn't want to demonstrate with the Tensos uh, because I didn't wanna potentially risk damaging this panel trying to pull off a demonstration piece. But you can see here, it's just really incredible how these pieces just lock on like this. I was very skeptical about purchasing this Lamello, but um, if you've got the right applications for it, it's a pretty incredible tool. So that's how that pops on right there. I'm gonna go ahead and try and pop that off now. Lefty Lucy. And then I'll show you the Tenso connectors and how they work. So again, just taking a closer look at this, there's our Clamex. You insert your wrench there and you can see how that locking mechanism pivots down there like so. Awesome cam action, pretty powerful, really cool. Then of course these Clamex, uh, they're pretty cool because again, these are removable. So again, here I was just demonstrating something and uh, I can pop those out pretty easily. They slide right out. So now here is a different type of connector. This is the Tenso connector and these are gonna actually snap into place. So I've got a same scrap demonstration piece that I showed before. I'm gonna go ahead and slide these in like so. And we will do the other side also. Just like that. Now with the Tenso connectors, you do not need this hole here. You don't have to grab a wrench and try and tighten anything. So I'm gonna flip this around because that hole is not necessary with this demonstration. Now you can try and snap these together just like this. It's gonna take more force or they give you these little preload clips, which are kind of, they're kind of an interesting uh, little clip, but I'm gonna take this plastic piece, slide it in there like so, and now we'll come up here to our connector and you push that down in there. And it kind of relieves some of the pressure uh, and it makes it easier to snap the pieces together. So again, take our plastic piece, slide it up there, push that in. Okay, so now we've got our Tenso connectors in place here and you'll see this just snap together. So that's locked together now. Pretty decent clamping pressure. It's not as good as the Clamex, uh, at least I don't think so, so far. And you can pull these apart, but it's really designed to go together and stay together. Um, so there, you can see that popped apart there like so. If I wanna put it together again, so interesting tool. But the whole idea of this design on what I'm doing here is I'm gonna install this panel at the job site raw like this. The painter is gonna paint the whole thing black and then we'll take our pre-finished our pre hickory slats 
install our Tenso connectors, and then we should just be able to snap all of these in place, and it should execute uh, with a really crisp, clean installation, just popping these things down and uh, connecting in place. So stay tuned, I'll show you uh, that process whenever I get to it. I'm not gonna be doing that until the final, so that's gonna be a few months down the road. All right guys, so now it's Saturday and I have started the install of my slats. Um, I don't even know what to call these things, one by strips, I'm gonna call them slats, on this kind of modern locker wall. So to start off with, I obviously made everything, the back panel in the shop and did all the mortises. The first thing I did, as I say all the time, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. There was a lot of danger with going ahead and allowing the painter to just paint over all my mortises. Good chance it would have filled those with enough paint that it would have been very hard to slide those connectors in. It's already kind of hard to push those connectors in sometimes. So I bought some 3 8 of an inch wide tape, half an inch wide would have been better, but covered all of those slots that way the paint did not get inside them. Didn't take too long, pop those pieces of tape off, and now I'm on to the process of putting the slats in. I'm really happy with how the progress is turning out on this. Everything is going together really crisply. The margins are fantastic. Even whenever the slats are crooked and have some nasty bow in them, the tenso connectors, because I've got them spaced every 18 inches, it's straightening all the pieces out and keeping a nice three quarter inch reveal between all these pieces. Now, whenever you do a job like this, it can be very tedious. It can take a ton of time. So you wanna think in terms of production, what can I do to increase the speed of this process by batch cutting, batch marking, and things like that? The first problem that I had to solve here was how am I gonna do all of these mortises quickly? The cabinet guy uh, did all of these strips for me. He pre-finished them. Uh, they look really nice, but they don't have the mortises in them already. So how can I quickly transfer the locations of all these mortises onto all of these different slap pieces? It's a ton of them. So the easy answer is to make a story pole or a story stick which is basically just a pattern that we're gonna use, and we're gonna use that to mark the locations on all of these different pieces. So to make my story stick, the first thing I did was I got a piece, I cut it to length, and then this one is actually a little bit long because it's my original story stick and they're a little bit longer over here. But I put that in place, then I simply took my square and I used my square to mark the top and bottom of all these mortises. So simply turned it like this and then drew a line on the edge all the way across. And then I split the difference between those two marks and marked the center lines on this story stick. I'm cutting about five pieces at a time. So each time I get ready to cut a batch, I take my measurement, just shoot my laser here from this trim piece on the bottom up to the ceiling. For the most part, they've been pretty close to the same. We're out here in the garage and uh, our locker unit is just right in here. So I've got my saw set up outside here. Now, as you can see over here, I've got my pieces that the cabinet guy made for me. And it worked out really well because he bumble bundled them up uh, with some plastic wrap. So I can just batch cut them, leaving that plastic on and it works really well. So again, anytime you can make five cuts with one cut motion, that's a win, you're making money. So I'm gonna leave this plastic wrap on. Pull this down, making sure everything stays together and doesn't move. Now I can pull my measurement, mark it once. Cut five sticks together. Okay. 
So I'll be making all of my mortises with my lamello here, but I need to be able to transfer the center lines from my mortise from my story stick onto these five pieces. So I've got them still in the plastic wrap face up. I'm gonna go ahead, I would need everything to be square so that the lines are all perfectly in line. So if I need to line up a bunch of pieces, I'll take my speed square, pop it into my miter box slot here and slide it down and bump it in place. So now I can look at the ends of the pieces in my square and make sure everything is in line so that I'm getting my marks at the same length. Here you see, you just take your square, drop it in so that it goes up against your fence and then you can align your pieces up with the back of your miter saw fence so these are all going to be at a 90 degree angle so that they're all lined up perfectly. And then here's our story stick and the center lines will transfer those across now uh, on the other five pieces. I do like to use a clamp uh, after I get everything in place just to clamp it together to make sure that nothing moves whenever I'm marking these. And just like that, in just a few moments, we've got our marks all the way across on everything. So now we can start hitting the lamello hard. You will notice with these slots that you get some splintering. So I try and get that all off. I've been uh, just taking my flat bar and kind of just working these pieces on the tear out back and forth. And that seems to be doing a pretty good job of just getting rid of it pretty quickly. So a box of these Tenso connectors, uh, which I believe has about 300, yeah, 300 in it, is about 300 bucks. So these things are about a dollar a piece. Um, so not a cheap fastening system, but uh, they're pretty easy to install now. So we just slide them in and I try and look so that the center, center of the connector is kind of lined up with my center marks there, but that's all there is to it. Um, just slide the rest of these in place and then I'll show you how these little clips work. These kind of help snap everything in place. Um, it's worth doing. I'll show you how these work in a second. So you could go from this with just the regular Tenso connectors and go ahead and install these just like they are. But they give you these little preload clips that I recommend using. It's a little plastic piece here and you push it over the top and it kind of preloads these and it makes it, it doesn't require so much force to push these in place. So it's something worth doing. Okay, come on. And just like that, we've got five pieces ready to pop in place. So I'll be honest, at this point, it's actually a little bit frustrating how easy it is to pop these in place. I just kind of lay them up against the wall and I start with the bottoms. Go ahead and just get the bottom lined up. And I put the bottoms in first five at a time and then I move up and finish up the tops.
All right, time for the last two pieces. This is satisfying. This thing was a royal, royal pain in the butt. By the way, I do apologize if uh, the video quality is not great in this room. It's really dark. All right, guys, there it is. So we'll have a full uh, locker cabinet on the side over here with a bench right here, but stain grade up against a black painted surface on the back, perfectly crisp and clean, no exposed fasteners, pre-finished, perfect cut lines where everything joins together, I'm not trying to mask anything off, that's why I did this. So, I'll show you what else we got going on. So the reason I'm here on a Saturday putting these slats in is because the cabinet guys are gonna start on Monday and then they'll be able to get those cabinets knocked out in that area. So we got hardwood finishing up in here. I was a little disappointed with these. They ended up painting them white. I thought they were gonna be stain grade on the outside, but they changed their mind, I guess. Stair guy, I was working today. He randomly showed up with his two daughters and just casually glued up and laminated this handrail and was out of here before I even noticed. Just came out here and was like, oh, there's a handrail glued up. I hope that someday I can just casually stroll into a job site on a Saturday and glue up a curved handrail. So that's it for today. We'll wait and see what it looks like once the uh, cabinet guys get their work done, but I'm super happy with how everything went together, even though it was a bit tedious and a bit of a pain to go through that whole process. Hey guys, fast forwarding into the future yet again, I wanted to show you the finished product. This looked absolutely amazing at the end of this build. The execution was really good. Nice, crisp lines, straight lines, and the cabinetry that went around this detail looks excellent. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. We'll see you on the next one.